Redmi has released a Redmi Note 8 Pro and it is one of the best, if not the best, budget-friendly Android smartphones. Redmi Note 8 Pro has impressed the masses and this phone is the talk of the town right now. In this video, we are going to take a look at over 20 different tips and tricks and the hidden features of the Redmi Note 8 Pro. I would like to make it clear that these are not entirely the hidden features but these are the features that you are usually unable to note on your phone, but they exist and they can potentially improve your daily usage. So let's start off with some of the camera tips first of all. If you open the camera application of your phone, you are welcomed by this interface. You have the 64 megapixels mode, the photo mode, and the portrait mode. Other modes are also there, but we are going to take a look at the macro mode first of all. For example, you want to shoot the objects that are really close to your phone's camera or the objects that are extremely small. What you can do is open the camera and click on this small flower. This will turn on the macro mode and this is going to capture extremely detailed pictures of the small objects. In the camera application, you have the portrait mode as well. Now this portrait mode is something special. First of all, you see these buttons in the portrait mode. If I click on this button, it gives me the option to change the depth effect. If I go towards a smaller value, the background blur will be dense. If I go towards a higher value, lower will be the background blur in a picture. So you can adjust it according to your own choice. If I click on this button, I see further options. For example, uh, the natural mode, the stage mode, the movie mode, the rainbow mode, and the blinds. There are some other options as well. Now let's uh, suppose that I have this portrait uh, picture taken already. I can change the effects of this picture even after capturing it. I have this button here, if I click on it, I can change the blur level. Similarly, I can apply the light trails effect on this picture. You can see that it's animating a little bit. So you have all these choices for the portrait pictures on your phone's camera. Another useful feature in the camera application of the Redmi Note 8 Pro is the use of watermark. If you go to the settings, you will find the watermark option here. Now you can see that we have the custom watermark option. If you open the custom watermark option, you can type in whatever you want and this watermark will appear on your picture. The next tip is the use of split screen feature on your phone. You cannot find this feature straight away on the phone, so you have to use a pathway to access it. So if you have a lot of applications opened on your phone, you can go to the recent applications panel and click on the split screen feature here. Another way to access the split screen feature is to long press the application and click on the split screen button. You can see that uh, the Chrome has opened in the split screen and I can choose another application that supports a split screen. If I want to go out of the split screen feature, I will simply click on the exit button. Another useful tip is that uh, you can see all these toggles in the notifications area. Now some of these toggles are backed by the additional settings. For example, I long tap the Wi-Fi option here, I can access the Wi-Fi settings. Similarly, if I long tap the mute toggle here, I can access the sound settings. Let's take a look at some of uh, the display tips. You can open the settings of your phone and go to the display. In the display, you can see that we have the dark mode here. If you click on it, the dark mode is enabled and it is the system wide dark mode. You can see that everything has turned black here. Now keep in mind that this dark mode uh, does not have any technical advantage and that is because Redmi Note 8 Pro is using an IPS LCD display. The dark mode saves a little bit of battery percentage on Super AMOLED screens. We do not have the Super AMOLED screen here so this dark mode is nothing more than a UI feature. Another way to access dark mode is that you can enable the dark mode for specific applications. Let's say that you don't like the system-wide dark mode and you want to have it on certain applications only. You can open an application like the phone dialer, click on the hamburger, click on the settings, go to the display options, and here we have the dark theme. I had it enabled and, and here is how you can enable it or disable it. You can find this dark mode in stock applications like messages and a couple of other applications. I'm not sure if all the applications will support it. The next useful tip is to hide this notch. For the users who don't like this notch at the top, they can easily hide it. They can go to the settings of the phone, click on display, click on notch and status bar, and click on hide notch. 
you can see that the notch is hidden now and now the notch has come back another useful tip for uh, the geeks is that they can show the connection speed at the top if you click on uh, this toggle you can see that the connection speed for the current network appears in the status bar of the phone and other useful tip here is to enable uh, the battery indicator in the graphical form if you don't like the percentage you can click on this and you will have the percentage gone Similarly, you can bring back the percentage like this. Within the same notch and status bar settings, we have the notification shade shortcut. Now, you must have seen this small settings icon in the notifications panel. If you don't use this settings button, you can replace it with a search button. You can come here, click on this notification shade shortcut and click on search. You can see that the settings icon is gone and we have the search button here. Next tip is to use the applications and games in the full screen mode. Let's say that there are some applications and some games that hide the notch when you are playing them but you don't want the notch to hide and you want to play the game in the full screen. You can go to the display and you can go to the full screen mode. Now here you have some applications that work in the full screen mode. There are some applications that may or may not work in the full screen mode. And then there are some applications that are optimized for the full screen mode. You can enable or disable the full screen mode for the applications depending on your personal choice. Now you can see that we have an arrangement of five into six icons on the home screen of your phone. But default, this arrangement is not five into six. Uh, the icons look big and they occupy a lot of space. If you want to adjust more icons on the home screen of your phone, you can go to the settings, click on the home screen and here you can see the home screen layout. Click on the home screen layout and you can see that uh, we have the 4 into 6 and 5 into 6. I recommend having it set to 5 into 6 to have more icons on the home screen of your phone. The next tip is to protect your applications on the phone. Uh, if you want to set a password or a pattern for the applications, you can go to the settings. In the settings, go to apps. In the apps, go to app lock. Set a pattern for the application and you can see a list of applications. For example, I don't want someone to access YouTube on my phone. I will enable it for YouTube. Uh, I'm not setting it up for the first time, but if you set it up for the first time, it's going to ask you to unlock the applications using the face ID and the fingerprint scanner. I have the pattern turned on right now. Now let's say that I go to the YouTube application. You can see that it's asking me to enter the pattern. Next useful tip is to use dual applications on your phone. Let's say that you want to run two instances of Instagram, two instances of Facebook, or you want to run two WhatsApp on your phone because this phone has a dual SIM functionality, you can go to the settings, go to apps. In the apps, click on dual apps. You can enable the dual apps for all the applications listed here. It's time to take a look at some of the lock screen tips. You can go to the settings of the phone and click on the lock screen here. Now you can see that in the lock screen menu, you have these options. The double tap to wake screen, raise to wake. These options are disabled by default. I have them enabled. So the double tap screen to wake uh, basically wakes the phone up by simply double tapping when the phone is locked. Let's say that the phone is locked right now. I will double tap and the screen wakes up. Similarly, you have the race to wake. When the phone is locked like this, you can simply pick the phone up and it will wake up on its own. I recommend these features having turned on. Now next to these features, you have the lock screen info. You can click on it and you can turn this on and you can add any info here. Uh, this feature is recommended to add your phone number to the lock screen of the phone. On the same lock screen, we have the launch camera button. It says that double press the volume button to open the camera when the screen is locked. This is also disabled by default. So I have it enabled already. When the phone's screen is locked like this, you can double press the volume down button and it will launch the camera. On the same panel, we have the pocket mode. If your phone keeps picking up touches while it's in your pocket, you can enable it and it will prevent all the touches that happen on their own. In the same lock screen, we have the password and security. If you go here, you can see that we have the face unlock option. If you want to have additional options to unlock your phone, you can enable the face unlock in addition to the fingerprint unlock. In the same settings, we have the second space as well if you want to have a private space on your phone, which means that a private entire UI where you can install applications or store some files or take some pictures to keep away from the current menu of the phone. You can turn on the second screen 
and protect it with a password or with the fingerprint scanner of your phone. Redmi Note 8 Pro has this incredible 19 is to 9 screen to body ratio display. So if you want to enjoy the full screen display on the phone, you can replace the navigation buttons by navigation gestures. So here is how to do that. Go to the settings of the phone. In the settings, you have to go to the additional settings. And in the additional settings, you have to click on the full screen display. In the full screen display, you can click on the full screen gestures. You can see that the buttons are gone now. We have this uh, extremely thin chin at the bottom. So if you are a fan of full screen display like this, you can enable the screen gestures here. Furthermore, if you don't like uh, this orientation of the navigation buttons, you can mirror the buttons. Let's take a look at some button shortcuts now. You can go to the settings of the phone and in the settings, you can go to the additional settings. Here you have the button shortcuts. First of all, you can see that it's giving you the option to set a shortcut for the camera application. You can choose any button from the following to launch the camera quickly on your phone. Next to that, we have uh, the screenshot option. By default, we have the three fingers down gesture. If I swipe down like this, the phone captures a picture and if I click on scroll, it will take a scrolling screenshot. I have the further options for the screenshot here. Now, if you don't like these gestures and you want to use uh, the power plus home button or you want to long press the home button, you can change the settings from here. Similarly, you can change the settings to turn off the screen. You can set a button for torch and you have some other options here. Within the same options, you have the notification light. For those who don't know, you have a very tiny notification light that appears next to the camera in this dot drop notch of the Redmi Note 8 Pro. So you can turn this light on or off or keep it on or off during charging. In the same menu, you also have the quick wall button. If you want to have the quick assistant on your screen, you can turn this on. You will have this quick assistant and you have the buttons on the go here. Let's take a look at some of the special features of this phone now. If you go to the settings, you can find the special features option here. You can see Game Turbo here. Uh, this phone is powered by the Helio G90T processor, which is specifically built for gaming. And the game booster is going to be useful here. It basically keeps the gaming uh, distraction free and it also boosts the performance of the graphics and the processing of the phone. So uh, you can add the games to the game booster by clicking on the add game button. All the games that you have installed, they will appear here and you can select the games that you want to work with the game booster. You can access the settings of the game booster by clicking on the settings button here. You have the game speed booster, in-game shortcuts, home page orientation and some other options here. Another special feature of this phone is the use of quick replies. For example, you are getting a message on your WhatsApp or Instagram and you want to reply quickly from the notifications area. You can enable the quick replies. Any message that appears in the notifications panel will have the reply button next to it. The last tip for the Redmi Note 8 Pro users is the use of the native screen recorder of this phone. You can go to the tools and access the screen recorder here. Pressing this button will start the screen recording. In the settings of the screen recorder, you can find the resolution option, the video quality, the orientation, and the sound source. If you want to record from the mic, you can select mic or you can mute the sound entirely or the system sounds will record the internal sound of the phone only. That's all with the Redmi Note 8 Pro tips and tricks. I hope that you guys liked this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button. And if you loved it, please consider subscribing to my channel. If you have any suggestions or recommendations that can help me improve my videos further, make sure that you drop them in the comment section down below. Also, if you have any other Redmi Note 8 Pro tips and tricks, do share them with other Redmi Note 8 Pro owners in the comment section down below. With that said, I will sign off and I will see you in the next one really soon.